Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I was going to talk to you in the shade of the porch, but I ended up over here by the river, which is quite a pretty sight, don't you think? So I hope you can hear me uh, over the sound of the river here. I'll speak up just in case. Oh, I was traveling just now in the, in the car and I was thinking about uh, the sequence of events that leads to constant clairaudient communication. And so I was paying very uh, close attention to my, my physical body and my aura. <laughs> so what I've been noticing for a long time is, is kind of a scratchiness in my throat and uh, as, if, as if my throat chakra were being overused because of this constant um, telepathic chatter I've been hearing, right? So incoming, it seems to come into my throat. When I hear something, I hear it through my throat chakra. And so then I noticed that, that when I heard something, almost immediately there was a response that I gave without actually thinking it through, an unconscious response, okay? And then the cycle would continue between uh, the incoming and then a, um, a kind of a visual jiggle. And then the thought would come out through my throat chakra and go out to other people. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like a cycle, a constant cycle, unconscious, okay? So, I don't know if you all know this trick or not, uh, or whether it would appeal to you, but when, when I miss something, uh, when I unconsciously slide by something that happens in my mind, I find that for me it works to just say, um, please, please roll that back. I don't know exactly who I'm talking to, but it works every time for a sentence, the sentence that I missed or the thought that I missed comes back and, and rolls back through my mind. So I did that. I said, please, because uh, I noticed it was an unconscious thing. And I rolled it back and what I heard was little imps around my aura. And what were they saying? Mike will jiggle this. I think that was it. Mike will jiggle this. And so Mike's their name for uh, themselves. I think it comes from Archangel Michael and it's like a diminutive, kind of uh, splitting off during the, um, during the process of creating duality many eons ago. You know, so they call themselves Mike and, and it's as if Archangel Michael were donating some of his goodness to this, this duality show. <laughs> so anyway, and I've heard this voice before, in fact, I'm going to try and find another blog where a different, uh, like, football play uh, was being employed, and I figured that one out. And it's taken me forever to figure this one out. So, <laughs> here's how it goes. They say there's an imp here and an imp there around us, right? Around our, I don't know, our soul, our aura, something like that. So up here, there's an imp. He says... Mike will jiggle this, right? And, and somehow that creates um, a jiggle in the aura and in the visual field and in the mental field and a thought kind of just spills out unconsciously. <laughs> it's the strangest thing. And that thought is processed through the throat chakra. Now, uh, then apparently the same thing is happening on the other end, where, wherever that is, and the other end sends something back, you know. So, so what we can do when that happens is we can talk to that voice and we can tell it that it's not for our own good that this is happening because I think that what is called imps are merely nature spirits that have been uh, played by darkness into believing that what they're doing is for our own good. So if you explain it's not, they usually stop. Now, sometimes they're under the spell of black magic and they can't stop. 
uh, in which case you can just keep telling them not to do that. Or basically, you become aware of the football play that's happening. And this awareness uh, actually destroys that game. So, I, I bid you good luck with this in case it's happening to you. It happens actually all over our aura. Uh, with different, anywhere we find unconsciousness, we will find some kind of little game going on amongst imps on the, in the fourth dimension, you know, that's creating that, this unconsciousness or usually building off of prior unconscious, um, unconscious uh, thoughts. So, um, that's my unusual thought for today. I hope I wish you all the very best in love and light and laughter. Take care. So I just had a quick codicil to add about all this. Where I'm sitting right now there are grasshoppers everywhere so for all I know one might land on my nose before I finish here. <laughs> You know, the very nature spirits that are responsible for what I'd call football plays that, that uh, perpetuate what you call um, dark strategies uh, in, our, in our physical form, in our body of light and in our aura. I'm not sure. It's the whole like thing together, you know, the whole bailiwick. <laughs> anyway, these football plays that are taught to them the nature spirits that I call imps by the dark and often under threat of death or else under, you know, they're, they're frightened to death and so they do what naturally they wouldn't do with the Davis uh, instructing them. And, uh, or else they're, they're lied to by the, by the dark and they don't know, you know, they have to be told as we've discussed before. <laughs> so. So I call them imps, and uh, in the past I've called them, I unfortunately called them harsher names due to the fact that I was just discovering the nature of, of, of uh, the natural world. I didn't know that what we call imps that do things that we, what we feel to be damaging to us are actually, you mean they may well be just really good, good nature spirits that have been greatly misled, you know? And the nature spirits, not only do they cause like psychological damage and pain sometimes when they're misled, but they're, they're also responsible for our great good health and, our, and our getting our wishes fulfilled and all kinds of wonderful things, okay? And these nature spirits are part of the dream time world. They're part of the time part of the dimension that we go to when we're asleep. Say eight hours a day, okay? Um, eight hours a day, we're in a higher dimension, the fourth dimension. And uh, that is the dimension from which the physical realm pr proceeds. It, it creates the physical realm. Okay, and good relations with the high, with the dream time world, what the Aborigines call the dream time world, good relations with the nature spirits create a much brighter uh, 3D world for us, a much brighter realm. Um, so it's important to remember that the dream time is what creates the physical and not the other way around. And in fact, one more thing to keep in mind is that right now 4D, as everybody's saying, been saying, has an element of darkness in it, um, which makes it difficult here in the manifestation in the 3D world. But but the dimension that we're moving we're moving through fourth dimension through dream time, we're recognizing the elementals now. We're finding out about about exactly how. Uh, the nature spirits have been tricked by darkness so that we can create our own good relationship with the nature spirits. And as we do so, as we rise through the fourth dimension, 
we are in expectation of getting to the fifth dimension where it's very easy because there is no darkness, right? So our relationship with the nature spirits that we're developing now, as nature spirits rise to the sixth dimension, as we rise to the fifth dimension, is very important. It will be very important in the future. So. <laughs> well, this is a postscript to the codicil. I was, um, I was home just now, I was hanging out inside, and I noticed uh, sort of a slowly ratcheting up increase in a generalized a feeling of generalized anxiety or dread or just very mild dread or something like that. So I thought, having found out about the mechanics of that, that other stuff today, I thought, geez, I'll, I'll listen for like a little impish voice, right? And I listened and I heard, I heard, um, let me hit her there, let me hit her there. And, and it was going in that cadence. And what I felt was in the back of my, in my back, uh, the energy uh, behind my back, um, behind my heart, in the back cone of the heart chakra area, you know how there's a front cone and then there's the center of the heart in the, in the center of the chest. And then there's a cone that goes out the back part, right? What I felt was like a, an insistent, slow tapping on the back of my heart, right? And so apparently that, that, that little imp or whatever it was, a nature spirit, something, was, was trying to like create that emotion or ratchet up that emotion by, by touching that, the back of the heart cone. So it's just interesting to me, the mechanics of it. I don't have the answer about what to do about it right now, except to notice it, notice what's happening in a physical sense, and maybe, you know, take a nap or just sit out in the sun or something like that for a while until, until the impish behavior desists. <laughs>